All right, guys, good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers Leather Supply, and here we are making the, uh, crap. All right, good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers Leather Supply, and we are continuing making the Stockyards Duffel Bag. Um, so this, we got all the pieces uh, prepped yesterday sewing all these sides down and everything. Okay, and uh, then I went ahead and did one so I could show you what we were talking about here. But I sewed the um, the reverse gusset onto the end cap here. Okay, so I just sewed it finish side to finish side, just right along the very edge. I didn't glue it, I didn't um, stick it with a double-sided tape or anything because I don't want any of that to show. I just kind of held it together and sewed it. So I'll show you how I did that right here. Okay, I will try really hard to keep my hands out of the way. Let me get my camera down on my sewing area. This camera's awful cool, but it's hard to see sometimes. All right, so again, I'm going finish side to finish side. I'm still using my class 18 uh, size 138 thread. This is colored natural. Um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna lift my presser foot and get my threads out of the way. Do, 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 do. Dang it. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to back stitch first all the way up to the top and then I'll go forward with it. And again, I'm just kind of holding these two pieces of leather together so I'll have to stop every few inches and make sure they're good and, good and straight on each other. So here we go. And it's not a difficult task to do this. Um, the hardest part is just when you get down into the corners, of course, the top piece needs to stretch a little bit to match the roundness of the, the, the corners. No biggie. Just got to make it work. Okay, so here we are coming down to a corner. I'm going to sew as long as I can the straight line, and then I'll start wrapping this top piece around like this. Okay. Now I try to make all of my corner turns while the needle's down in the leather, but I also, since I've been doing this a few years, I also try to not stop the machine and just do it as it goes. Okay, so we'll stretch a little more here, and it's okay if you get a little bit off. I mean, um, you know, if the top leather is a little bit to the inside, um, it's okay. You won't see it on your finished product. Um, but you do want to keep it as close as you can, because then it has a more uh, square and uh, uniform shape. back to a straightaway so we just hold the two pieces together and run it All right, back to another corner. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the camera though. There's no need in the world to watch me do the same thing all the way up the other side. Um, that way we can save some time. All right, so once I am done sewing that piece on, I'm just gonna take and 
cut the edge of it off or the end of it off right there at the top of the leather both sides okay now on to the next step we need to sew the three main body pieces together so that's two sides and a bottom okay so to do that there we go I'm gonna take my work area is getting smaller. I got uh, my buddy Justin out there cutting out all the bags for the Prescott class that we're given. So to do this, what we're going to do is put a piece of tape right along the top of that, right there. Okay, right there on that edge, and uh, stick it together. Where do I put my tape? There it is. Okay, and I'm just going to do one side at a time because if I try to stick both sides on and then go and sew and everything, like one side might break loose, and we don't want that. Okay, so I'm just putting a piece of tape right at the very edge of the leather, leaving a 32nd of an inch or so, um, so that it's not right on the edge. You, you know, we've talked about shiny things sticking out in between layers. We don't want that. Okay. And then when I stick this together, when I stick this together, let me get this other piece out from under here. Might not look as confusing, I reckon. Open this drawer so this thing has something to rest in and not fall. Okay, so I'm gonna peel the back off my tape. Just gonna lay this sucker on here and you can eyeball this or maybe you can even measure you know a quarter of an inch uh, or so and, and make you a little tick mark or something like that um, sometimes I'll even take and just do this from the back side and draw me a little ink line uh, where I want those two to, to uh, overlap but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of go one side and then the other and I'm gonna do the width of the tape plus a tiny bit. Okay, that is an official leatherworking measurement, the width of the tape plus a tiny bit. And then I'll look at the ends and make sure that they match up and that they're the, the same on both sides. There we go. So now I'm just going to sew down that line right there, all the way across. I'll back stitch, go all the way across it, back stitch again, um, and then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to uh, do the exact same thing, putting the other side on the uh, the other side of the bottom. Okay, the bottom is overlapping the top. That's how we hide the ends of our straps and things like that. You can go ahead and trim the back of these straps if you like to. I'm going to wait until that line is sewn down before I trim them, and that way there's just no issues at all. Um, but yeah, so when I come back, this side will be sewn down, and we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. All right, got those first two pieces sewn together. Okay, you can see that stitch line right there. I almost went ahead and changed my um, thread to dark brown so that it would really um, contrast with the lighter colored leather, but I didn't do it. So, um, like I said, now the backs of these handles, I'm just going to take a pair of scissors, cut them off. Okay, just that hard. And now they look extremely professional and they're buried into that seam right there. There we go. All right, buried into that seam right there. Now, since I used a thinner leather to make this bag, I, th I thought of this while I was just sewing that together. I could have used this dark brown leather for the bottom and it would have more structure to it. But, again, I thought of that while I was already sewing it together. So guess what? It didn't happen. 
it'll still be fine don't get me wrong if for some reason i find that the bottom of this bag is too uh weak i will just cut me a leather panel out of some really crappy heavy duty leather and just stick it in there i won't even sew it in i'll just put it in there as a like a removable panel i guess in the bottom of the bag okay so now um all i'm going to do now is the exact same thing on the other side okay so i will take this panel now okay and uh put the tape on it and then stick this to it just like we did before there is no reason in the world to make you watch it twice because then i got to think of creative things to say and some bad jokes and stuff like that you know and it's probably just better if i just let you know that you already know what i'm doing and uh yeah we come back these ball three of these panels will be sewn together and we're gonna put the end caps and gussets on it and it's gonna start looking like a bag real soon so see you in a minute all right so i'm gonna start uh putting some handles on this bag and um, things like that and it's best to, or easiest to do that while the bag can still lay flat okay so what i'm going to do here that gummit walked over there for one thing forgot another what i'm going to do here is cut out my handles themselves okay um you can use i like to have kind of a thicker handle a little bit beefy this is uh nine ten ounce of the same kind of leather that i used for all the uh the accents on the bag so if you were doing veg tan then that's great you can continue with that so i'm going to round off my edges okay my handles are going to be 24 inches long i figured that was a nice round number and uh has a good look to it on the bag okay now I am going to take and sew down the edges of these handles. Even though they're single piece handles, I'm still going to sew all the way around them because I love the look of the contrasting stitching. Okay? Love it. It's just my favorite part. So, I cut me a handle and then I'm just going to go to the sewing machine and just sew all the way around it for no reason other than the decoration of it. Okay? And then when I'm done, um, with that, I'm going to rivet it to the bag. Okay, and I'm just going to rivets or I love brass rivets, and we're going to use brass rivets. Um, and we're also going to do the um, the D rings uh, for the shoulder uh, strap with brass rivets. Okay, so I'm going to make sure these handles are the exact same length because if they're not, then the bag will be all wumper jawed when I carry it, won't it? I think I cut them a little bit wide. I should have used my Gerlach gauge and I did not. And now I'm paying for it because they're a little bit wider than my one inch punch. Um, no huge deal, just stinks, you know? So I'm gonna cut that last little. Luckily that's just a fold over that'll be, um, that'll be uh, riveted under there anyway. So I'm gonna sew around them, I'll grab it. All right, so I got all the uh, straps sewn. Got that nice, pretty contrasting stitch color on it. I am going to run an edger down them, but I wanted to show you real quick. We're going to set a, uh, a D-ring for the shoulder strap, okay? So what I'm going to do is take a piece of um, piece of this thinner one-inch strap that I use for all the, uh, the straps on the sides of the bag and stuff like that. Cut it kind of like that. See? Use the Gerlach gauge. They're perfect. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I need to put the D-ring on it. I'm going to use a piece of double-sided tape if I can find it. There it is. I'm use a piece of double-sided tape just to kind of hold it closed so it's easier to use. so all right so I've already got a hole poked in this as per the pattern okay but I need to 
Transfer that hole down to the bottom layer there. Okay. And then I need to shove this thing down into that as far as I can and also poke a hole in it. I say poke, the term would be punch, I reckon. Okay. May have to stretch that out a little bit to get that shoved in there. And then sometimes I even take a scratch all to help me get it down in there if it's too uh, too thick and heavy. So I'll take a scratch all and I'll just take and push it into the leather, shove it down in there. Okay, it's going to mar it all up. That's okay. You're never going to see it again. Okay, we're almost there. I want it to where that D is just barely showing, or the, the top loop up there is just barely showing, okay? So what that means is I've actually cut this a little bit long because it's reached the bottom and I need to trim it. So no problem, I'm gonna trim it down a little bit, make it a little bit shorter. And you can skive the tips of these and that'll help you get them down in there. Butters and Myra are fighting over a toy. Nothing nothing new here. Okay. So now I'm again taking and shoving that sucker down there as far as I can get it. Okay, and sometimes I'll even take my scratch all and kind of pull up that area and stretch it out a little bit more and that will help again with you know giving it room to set down in there okay so there we go we got that uh, down in there and I'm gonna poke a hole or punch a hole in it if I can't get a hole all the way through it then I'll have to pull it back out again unfortunately and I did not get a hole all the way through it. As a matter of fact, the damn thing moved on me. All right, I'm going to have to start this whole process over, but you get the point. When I come back, we'll have it set in there and set the rivet. What happened is the tape gave, and as I pushed in, it just was doing that right there. Okay, and it just didn't go in there. So, you don't need to watch me wrestle with another one. I'll use a bigger piece of tape. I'll get her in there right. It needs to be wheel set a rivet. All right. So there's how I like to have this, where the D-ring is just real tight in there. Now we're ready to punch this hole and set a rivet, okay? So here we go. Luckily we got that uh, hole all the way through, so we don't have to worry about pulling it back out just to put it back in again, okay? Got me a brass rivet here and I need to turn. Whoop. I just stepped on a dog toy. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So I'm going to put my washer here on the back of this. And open this drawer and put the rest of the bag in so it doesn't just fall onto the floor when I let it go. And I need to grab my dadgum center that I didn't grab. Okay, I need to find my setter that somebody moved. I'll be right back. All right, got my setter. Put the setter over the rivet. Give it a whack. Okay. Then I take my uh, cutters. Now, the brass rivets are much harder to do than the copper. Uh, brass is a much harder metal than copper. Um, these are compound leverage cutters, so they do pretty well. I couldn't, I probably couldn't cut this very easily with just a standard uh, nipper uh, type cutter. Now you can use the doming part of the uh, the setter and kind of get your dome started. But honestly, I like to just go to town with my ball peen and just flatten her out. And then once I have a good peen going, I turn it over and flatten it. And when I'm done, I run my finger over it. And if it doesn't catch the skin of my finger, then it's probably not going to catch your clothes or whatever you're putting in the bag to scratch them up. 
this one is kind of catching my fingers, so I'm going to work a little bit more around the edges. Now it's good and smooth. So there we go. We set a rivet. It looks great. Um, I am going to set another rivet on the other side of the bag exactly like that one. And I'm also going to take my handles and put them in the D-rings and set rivets through them as well. Okay? So it, uh, I don't feel like you need to watch 20 minutes worth of rivet setting. Um, if you ever do feel like you need to do that, come on down to the shop one day and you can watch me set these dang things all day. But I think you probably got the point on this, and so I won't make you watch it over and over and over again. All right, so I um, had to go home last night and uh, take care of some business, so I did not get this video wrapped up last night. So here we are, bright and early, back at it. This bag's starting to look pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> but now it is time to sew the side gussets on so that it'll actually stand up and have some shape and then we're gonna finalize the zipper pieces and that's uh, that's it this bags gonna be done um, put all the rivets and the handles and stuff like that and then the uh, the d-ring hanger for the uh, the shoulder uh, strap okay now what I'm going to do is get it ready for its side gusset okay and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take and fold the bag exactly in half, okay? I'm going to match up the top pieces here. Let me get that camera down a little bit. There we go. Okay, I'm going to match up the top pieces here, and that way at the bottom down here, I can just grab and, and pinch it. And uh, I'm just going to take an ink pen, regular old ink pen, and on the inside, okay, not the nice outside, but on the inside, I'm just going to make a little mark right in the middle of that pinch. And basically, like any other bag that I've made that has gussets and stuff, you, I, I, when I start putting it together, I start from the middle out, and that way um, both the sides line up, and the bag's not wumper jawed or askew or you know any crazy things like that. I'm gonna turn it around and do the exact same thing. I need to do it to both sides before I start to, uh, um, before I put one of the sides on, because otherwise it will. Um, change its ability to find the exact center once one of the sides is on okay now i'm only going to work one side at a time i'm not going to put both gussets on and then go over there to the sewing machine and hope it stays on long enough to sew it together i ordinarily do not like to use glue on bags however one with this style of gusset is my exception it is so much easier to sew it together if it's glued and held properly um, as opposed to uh, trying to use tape or um, the little clips or anything like that okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay me down some masking tape so my glue doesn't just go crazy all over the leather here okay just regular old painters masking tape nothing special about it it's on the flesh side of the leather so as long as it doesn't leave a sticky residue which most masking tapes don't then you'll be fine okay um, and then I'm just gonna use that masking tape to know where to put my glue now on the very ends up here that that those gussets don't come all the way up to where this zipper is okay they stop a little short so a couple of inches from the zipper on each side is where I will stop gluing. Um, it's very easy to hold those areas together while you sew them. It's more down here in the corners that it's so difficult to, uh, to sew together um, without it being glued, okay? Um, so I need, to, I need to grab me a piece of scrap paper to throw under here. I, I forgot to do that, so I'll be right back. All right, got me some paper under here now so that I don't uh, get glue on my table. Um, I'm not going to put a heavy coat of glue on it by any means, just kind of a light dusting of uh, contact cement. Again, I'm going to start a couple of inches from the very the, the zipper here, and I'm just going to go along putting it on there. So much easier when you're using the masking tape because really you don't have to be crazy careful. Um, you know to have a nice pretty glue line because the masking tape will cause you a nice pretty glue line regardless 
my glue jar sat in my truck for a couple of days and now it's kind of thick. I need to add some more glue and mix it up good. All right, now I've got one of my, um, oh no, I am so sorry. Hang on. Uh, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I knocked my little camera over on its little tripod and that caused the, uh, the gimbal on it to uh, basically just lock itself up in its closed position. And uh, yeah, that was a little scary. So I had to turn the dang thing off just to turn it back on. So just like how I measured the center of that, I need to measure the center of this so that I have something to line it up with, right? So let me grab a ruler right quick. Okay, got one of my handy dandy centering rulers here. Do, 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 do. Alrighty. Grab my ink pen. And I'm just going to make a bark on that reverse gusset piece on the, uh, the flesh side of it. And that mark will line up with the other mark. But first, I have to put some contact cement on it. Okay. Um, I will suggest that you still use a couple of clips to hold it together while you're uh, uh, maneuvering it around and putting other pieces together. Um, just so that, you know, while you're working on the left side, the right side's not falling apart on you and, and vice versa. Things like that. Um, this one's a little bit easier to put glue on. Uh, I'm just going to put it on the very, very edge of the flesh side, and that is all. Going to be very careful not to get it out on the, the finished edge that will show on the bag because then that's going to create a lot of edge work where I will have to sand and stuff to get rid of that shiny, shiny glue that we've talked so much trash about this entire video. <laughs> okay. Just a gluing, nothing big. Almost there. I'm going to let this glue set up for a second while I uh, grab my clips and everything, and then we will start at the middle and work our way to the edges on putting this thing together. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is remove this tape. It has served its purpose, and I appreciate its service, but it's got to go. And of course, it wants to stick like crazy. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, now I've got that nice clean glue line to deal with. So, perfect. It did exactly what it needed. So, I'm going to start out by just putting these two uh, centers together here and pressing them together and putting a little clip on it. Kind of hard to do from my side, but I'm trying to make it to where you can see it. Hopefully you can, otherwise that is uh, all for naught, right? Let me bring the camera up some because we're going to need to have it up there alrighty um, I'm just using regular binder clips to hold this thing together while I go um, I'm not using my little special ones that I put leather on because honestly neither of these leathers is all that fragile that it would create you know ugly markings and things like that okay so a couple of binder clips as I get into a corner here no matter how hard I try I have glue on my hand <laughs> so sticky all right now i'm gonna turn well first i'm gonna remove this paper and get it out of the way and almost the camera down again every time i mention i need a camera guy all the employees are like oh yeah i'll do that but man they're all so busy that i never can get anybody so doing what i can 
All right, so I'm gonna turn this kind of towards you here so that you can see what we're doing, but I need to basically stand this up and then just continue lining up those edges and pressing them together as I go around. Now we've got two different ways that we can sew this together and I'm going to opt for the easier way. Um, the other way is great as well, but um, see again, I'm using a light colored thread and one side of this is a light colored leather. So therefore my stitch will not show up near as much on the light colored leather as it will on the inner gusset here, okay? The reason I'm telling you all this is ordinarily to sew this bag together, I would use a cylinder arm sewing machine and I would have this dark brown part down on the arm of the machine and rotate the bag all the way through the machine. Okay, and it is very difficult to do by yourself because honestly you need someone to help you hold the dang thing. Okay, so all right, and then here at the very top where there's no glue, I'm just going to put a couple of clips to hold it. But the easy way to sew this is that I would just lay this side flat on the sewing machine and the top of the stitch would be on the inside of this gusset. Ordinarily, the reason I don't do that is because I want the top of the stitch on the outside of the bag for prettiness. Um, but it won't show up very much the, that it's a bottom stitch on the outside of the bag because the, th the matching thread color. So why not have the ease of sewing it the other way and then also that pretty top stitch will be against the, uh, the darker color where it really will show up and it'll look great. And if I have totally confused you, I'm going to show you on camera here in just a minute. Just trying to get these, the, the better I do these edges and the, the um, more accurately I put the two edges perfectly together, then the less work I have to do later to clean it up and make it that way. I have a giant coffee can of these binder clips sitting over there on one of my benches and customers employees my son everybody when they're bored they might reach into there and grab a dozen of them and they'll like hook them all together or maybe move the little prongs to where they're down like that and then oh my gosh I get so mad because here I am trying to one-handed hold these things and um, put something together and all my clips have been messed with and grr when the employees do it, they do it to make me mad. When other people do it, I understand that they don't realize what they're doing to me. <laughs> All right, so this side of the bag is clipped together. Now this bag will be more rigid and hold its shape. We're gonna go right over here to the sewing machine, the same one we've been using. And I'm gonna show you what I was talking about with the angle of the sew. Okay. Again, I'm just doing one side at a time because there's just no reason in the world to try to rotate this bag, uh, or try to hold it all together, both ends, while I uh, while I do this. Yeah. Hush, Myra. Sorry, my dog must think someone's coming. All right, so to sew this together now, it's very simple. I'm just gonna kind of hold that back, get my edge guide up and out of the way. Okay. Do 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 do. I'm going to start out with a back stitch up here at the top, and I'm just stitching right along the edge, just like everything else, probably about an eighth of an inch stitch line. Okay. Um, I need to reach over here and hit this back button here to go backwards. So we'll do a couple of back stitches, and then we're going to go forward. Whoop, my wife is calling me, and... Uh, I need to get that. I will call. Be right back. 
All right, sorry about that. We still have a family member in the hospital, and Janie's up there with them. And uh, so, yeah, that's an important call always. So I'm just going to keep sewing along. I'm going to sew right down the edge of this sucker, trying to maintain an even distance from the edge. I could use my edge guide, but then you couldn't see what I'm doing. So I'll just have to go old school with it here. Okay, and then as I get to a corner, I'm just going to rotate the whole bag, um, you know, to where it's, I guess you can say, standing up. And uh, sew that edge too, and keep on a going. We're actually getting very close to being done with this bag. Um, sewing the ends on is a pretty major step. So. Then I can pack the trailer for Prescott because this sewing machine has to go. <laughs> Alright, so here I am towards the corner, so I've got to kind of be gentle with it. Need to make sure I maintain a straight line, and then I just need to rotate the bag through the corner. Again, normally I would use the cylinder arm and I would be doing this upside down of what you see here, but since uh, the stitch is going to show up more on the inside of this gusset than it will on the outside due to my color choices, um, I am very comfortable doing it this way. And also that takes two people to hold it when I sew it the other way, so my needs to hold the bulk of the bag. Um, you know, off the edge of the machine for me. All right, so here we have another straightaway. We're just going to go right across the bottom of the bag. And I'm going to kick it up a notch. It's difficult to kind of manage the, the end of the bag out here, but you just got to kind of find the best place to hold it and the best way to hold it while you're doing certain areas. And then that optimal way will change as you, you know, get into another corner or rotate to another side. Sometimes you have to hold the whole bag, sometimes just a part of it, you know, stuff like that. So now the bag's laying on its other side. We're just going to sew all the way to the top, back stitch, and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other gusset. Okay, I'm going to uh, find my center, glue it up, and uh, sew it up. And that's that. It's literally the exact uh, same way I've done this one, um, except the bag will have a little bit more structure, so it'll actually be easier to rotate through the machine. Um, due to that. So, all that to say, once I've done this back stitch, I'm going to turn the camera off so I can get that part done and you don't have to watch me do it and, you know, stuff like that. Alrighty. So there should be. I'll pull it out and show it to you. Show you the, the stitch actually looks really good on both ends or both sides. So I'm super happy with how this is turning out. This will be my Prescott bag. <laughs> All right. So here we have, flip the camera around so I can see the screen while the camera can see. Yeah. So here we have the outside seam and its uh, stitch line, which is the bottom stitch from the machine. And then there we have the inside stitch line, 
which is the the top stitch of the machine and it looks really nice super excited all right folks the gussets are sewn on and this is getting exciting my favorite part is you know if it's a turned inside out bag is when you get to turn it right side out but this one was never inside out so anyway looking great but now we have to work on this zipper up here to get it closed um and then just some finishing touches uh we'll put the the ends on it and so or put the butt snap on it so it'll snap down while, when closed um but yeah we're uh we're on the home stretch here folks so what i'm gonna do is flip this camera back around i'm gonna use my special little zipper tooth remover tool flip there you go my special little zipper tooth remover tool we have these here at makers and they are amazing if you do very many zippers um really makes it easy to knock the teeth off of zippers okay so what I need to do though is, right now these zippers are completely even. Um, like when I sewed the, the, the ends on them, bring it, yeah. so when I sewed the, 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 the leather to them, they were completely even. So I don't want them to be staggered at all. So what I'm gonna do first is knock a couple of teeth off of one side of the zipper. And in doing that, that'll make it to where I can put the, the slide on there and it hopefully we can get the teeth lined up to where it's, it's it stays that way and that that's where the um you know that everything's centered i'll show you what i mean in just a second um, it's super hard to <laughs> think of the words i'm sorry <laughs> all right so i'm just going to knock a couple of teeth off one side of the zipper here love this tool Okay, let's do that one more again. That got two teeth. I know I said a couple, but I'm at four. <laughs> All right, so we knocked out four teeth. So what I need to do is try to line this up as best as possible. Take my slide here. I'm gonna stick my slide on the other side of the zipper. Work it down about four teeth. And then work those edges in. Sometimes I can get it really quickly. Sometimes I have to work really hard at it. We shall see what today is going to bring. <laughs> well, not going to be a quick day. Oh, I think I felt it latch. All right, so I'm going to zip it up to just where the leather meets and see how close they are to matching up. And honestly, they're about a tooth off. So I'm going to go ahead and just try to adjust it. One little tooth. I may make it worse. Who knows? I mean, it wouldn't be the first time I made something worse. <laughs> Well, that time it slid right on though, that's great. And there we are. Those are nice and lined up right there. So now my zipper is um, is on it. But I will tell you this, I just did the whole thing kind of backwards, okay? When you look at zipper teeth, there's like a little like nipple on one side of them, okay? Um, hopefully you can see it that facing the next zipper tooth is, you know, it, it stands up right there. When I'm only using one slide, I like to make it to where it's going, where the nipples are pointing up when the zipper's closing, okay? Um, reason being, it just seems to be a little bit smoother. So I'm going to turn this thing around and I'm gonna do all that exact same stuff the other side of it, okay? Sorry to waste your time, um, but I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, so there's no reason to make you watch it again. But yes, I want the, the slide to be, when it's zipping up, I want those, those uh, the little dimples or nipples or whatever facing up, okay? All right, folks, so now we have the zipper in place and it is zipped up. Everything lines up really nicely. 
Okay, so the next thing we need to do is prepare it for putting these little ends on right here. Okay, now these little ends are not on the pattern because it's all about what your final width is right here. So basically we're going to cut them um, the same width as, as what your, uh, your zipper apparatus ended up being and then about four inches long. And then what we're going to do is knock a lot of teeth off the ends of these zippers so that we have somewhere to sew it onto and then put our stops on there and then um, yeah we'll sew those sew those on set a snap in it and guess what other than a little bit of trim work we're done and I like done I've still got to pack a trailer for Prescott and I leave in 14 hours love this job so anyway, um, I got to pause the camera right quick because I took my tripod off to charge it earlier and uh, I'll be right back. All right, so the goal is I'm going to put that stop right around where the end of my finger is. Okay, the bottom stop will be on this end and the top stop will be on the other end. Um, so that's a lot of teeth to knock off right there. And technically, I don't really have to knock all of them off. I could actually cut the end of that zipper um, straight across there. And that's actually what I'll do just to have keep from having to knock all those teeth off um, because again that other piece is going to sew right onto here and um, you know we just need that last quarter of an inch to sew it on and then the stop and then the rest of the zipper so um, I'm going to grab me some scissors do, 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 do. let me flip my camera around so I can see the screen and the end of it What's looking for, bro? A square with no nothing in it. I've only got the one with a circle in it. Oh, that'll work. Yeah. Are, some, are you going to click them or are you going to... I was going to flip them. Okay. You want to use a clicker in the back? Yeah. That's what okay. I'm video. Um, I, I found all the ones that had like the oblong holes and the double. For oh, yeah. And I was like... No, they're all in this one because this is what we take to the show in case we need more. All right, so I clipped that off. Again, I'm going to knock off about one, two, three, four, maybe five pair of teeth. And then uh, that'll be that. Part of the problem is also, though, the zipper tooth remover is a little bit wider than my final piece here. And so it can be a little bit of a bear. Luckily, that piece of leather will be covered up. I know that shakes the camera, and I apologize. But look how nicely those teeth just fall right off. Except for the ones that get stuck in the daggum thing. you got to clean it out every once in a while. All right. Seriously, I've got to get me a cameraman. I'm so sorry, guys. All right. Knocked all those off. Looks like a couple of them need to be rehit here. And then they should just all slide right out. There we go, and we just kind of flick those out. We want to be careful, though, not to accidentally separate the zipper. If we do that, then we're in bad bad business, because then we have to uh, come back and uh, put the end of the zipper back on it all over again and get it to zip back up. So we just don't want to separate the zipper. i got two pretty stubborn ones here, so I'm just going to use my clippers and clip them off. The clippers used to be how I took all my zippers off, but that little tool sure does a better job of not tearing up the zipper tape and ribbon All right 
So I'm gonna get a, uh, let me get a rubber board here. Okay, I'm gonna grab my bottom stop, okay? Cause this is the bottom of the zipper. Here's what my bottom stop looks like. It's got four little spikes on it. And then the top of it is just where it kind of closes off the zipper. I'm going to set it across where it reaches across both uh, sides of the tape. You want it so close to the bottom teeth that are left that, uh, that it touches them. Probably should have me a pair of pliers to do this. There we go. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my little hammer here and tap it down. Okay, I want to make sure, once again, that it's touching those teeth. If it's not touching those teeth, then the zipper will have room to, to come off of it. And you definitely don't want that to happen, okay? Um, I will need my pliers right quick. Because now I have to bend those prongs on the back of that to each other. And once I've done that, I'm going to use my hammer again and just flatten it all out nice and... Nice and neat. Sometimes, just like everything else with a zipper, sometimes it goes exactly to plan. Sometimes I have to really wrestle this thing. And how everything's been the last couple of days, I bet I have to wrestle it. There. Bottom stop complete. Okay. Now, I'm going to flip it around, and I'm going to do the exact same thing with the top stops. I'll knock all the teeth off, okay, and then once I get to the point that I need, I will bring the camera back, and I'll show you how I apply those top stops, and uh, then we'll move on to the next part of this bag. All right, so a top stop looks like this. It's just like a little C of brass, and it is the simplest thing to apply. I'm going to put it in my pliers with the open end facing out. I'm going to go under that ribbon almost at the last tooth and squeeze. And there it is. It's on. It's as good as it gets right there. It's the one part of the zipper I never have to fight. <laughs> However, finding it on my desk with all the little brass shavings everywhere, <laughs> I do have to fight. So I'm looking for the other side. And I think it might just be easier to grab another one. So, once again. All right, got my second one now. <laughs> I'll just go steal another one out of the package. Put it in my pliers. Come over here to the other side of my ribbon. All right. Moment of truth. If I did it right, the zipper won't come off. Woohoo! I love a success story. Now, other end. <laughs> The zipper also stopped. Great success. So here we go. Now I need to measure the actual width of this area right here. And I'm going to cut me a piece that's four inches long-ish. It can be a little longer, a little shorter, whatever. About four inches long. Um, and then it's this width. And then we're going to fold it in half and sew it right along the bottom of the base of that zipper there. And we're going to do it twice. We're going to do it on both ends of the zipper. Okay. Now I will warn you. Measure it back here. Don't measure it up here because the end of the zipper is pushed out some. So I'm going to measure it back here. That'll give me an accurate width. And when I sew it together, I'll pull that zipper slide back some. And I'll sew it up here at the, at the actual width. Um, and that way, this thing's not too big or too small for the piece that we just cut for it. Okay. So I explained all that. I'm going to go ahead and um, measure it. Uh, let me grab a ruler. Looks like it is one and five eighths of an inch wide. So one and five eighths of an inch by four inches is what I'm gonna end up cutting out. And when I come back, I'll have two of those cut out. All right, copy that piece, fold it in half. I just set the other, went ahead and set the other side of that snap just so I could show you kind of like where we're at here. Okay, now I'm gonna take and cut me a couple of little double-sided pieces of tape. 
and that will help me to stick it on the end of the zipper before I sew it on the end of the zipper. So, about like so. Dang it. Okay. Now, all I have to do is pinch my zipper down. I don't need to move the slide because it actually ended up not separating too well or too too uh, badly. And I'm just going to pinch that down right there. And now all I have to do is go back to my sewing machine and just sew straight across right that. Alrighty. So, I'll show you all that again because um, I didn't show you the, the snap setting and all that. Uh, so I just fold it in half. I take a piece of double-sided tape so it'll stay folded in half while I do this. Okay. Piece of double-sided tape. Fold her in half. Make sure your edges are good and lined up when you fold it. Okay. Let me grab my hole punch and my board. I want that snap out kind of towards the edge, but centered right to left on the fold. Just like that. Put that thing down real quick. Okay, now I found my snap. the back of my snap which is the the cup portion the female portion as it used to be called once upon a time snap setter I'll push over there good and set so just like I showed you a second ago, put some double-sided tape on there. I'm going to stick it on the other end over here and um, sew them down. When I come back, we'll talk about a couple of finishing touches um, and how I'm going to do my shoulder strap, and we're done. All right, folks. Here it is. And I am not even a little bit upset with how this thing turned out. I'm loving the colors. I'm loving everything about it. I cannot wait to go home and pack this up for the trip I'm about to have to make. Um, yeah. Um, it is, like I said, it's this, this, this leather's a little bit thinner than I'd like to use. And after stuffing some um, uh, bubble wrap in it to be able to shape the bag some, I think that I will go ahead and just cut me a little panel that just kind of fits along the bottom side of it. And I'm just going to set it down inside of it. Maybe with some double-sided tape on the back of it. But anyway, um, the other thing I want to show you is anywhere, like obviously when you got two layers that aren't matching up, you can sand or trim those down to make them match up. But the difficult part is right here in these corners. Okay, you got areas like just like this where you can see that lighter leather behind the darker leather. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... I'm going to take a uh, uh, French edger. Okay, I don't use too many French edgers, but I've started using them for this exact purpose. And I'm just going to run it along. Is my whole hand in the way? Of course it is. Just going to run it along there and try to trim that area off. Let me get <clears throat> down behind the camera. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. And I'm just going to trim off that middle part because the black the the back part of it's brown front part of it's brown i'm just trimming out that middle section right there okay so again i've not used many french edgers in my life i have a whole set of them um they're still pretty much brand new but i finally found a reason that i really like them this and a little bit of skiving on thicker leather too um really really good use for them but uh there we go looks a lot cleaner 
Um, I hadn't decided what kind of edge dressing I'm going to do on this. That'll have to happen after this trip because I don't have time to experiment and see what might work best with these leathers. So, um, shoulder strap. I'm going to do it just like I did my straps. I'm going to sew down the sides of it. Sew down the sides of it. I'm going to rivet my uh, swivel snaps onto the ends of it. It's going to be an inch and a half wide. Um, the reason it's an inch and a half wide is because on the original pattern, this tooled piece was an inch and a half wide. So it would all match. It would all be tooled. This one's not tooled, but I'm still sticking with the same theme. And I already have this hardware purchased for it. Um, so anyway, um, it's going to be long enough that it could be used for a cross sling. I'm not going to put a buckle on it. I'm going to make it a one piece. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to rivet one of these onto each end of it. And that'll be my, uh, my shoulder swing. So, appreciate your patience on this video. I'm uh, glad we finally got it done. I'm glad I got it done before I left. Uh, again, I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply. This has been the Stockyards Duffel Bag. Um, it is available, the pattern for it is available on our website, as well as just about everything you'd need to make the dang thing, except this particular leather. Uh, I've had people ask, it's a one-off I found in the warehouse. I did keep the tag off the back of it. I'm going to see if I can find more because I am in love with this color combination. Anyway, um, hope you have a great day and uh, leather on, folks.